I work as a bridal stylist, helping people find their perfect wedding gown. Most days, it's a happy job, and I get to work with great co-workers and customers. But then, there's that 1% of the time when things don't go so smoothly. Today, I had a bride who was nice but couldn't find a gown that she truly loved among the ones we had. That happens sometimes, and it's okay. But her mom, it's always the mom or aunt, was not pleased at all. Throughout the appointment, she kept talking badly about me in Spanish. She said things like, Does this woman even know what she's doing? She's picking only ugly gowns. The gowns were actually chosen by the bride. I hope you never gain as much weight as she has. And so on. It wasn't pleasant. Now, I may not look like I speak Spanish, being pretty white, but my parents are from a Spanish-speaking country, even though we're not ethnically Hispanic. I used to know a lot more Spanish when I was younger, but I can still get by. I decided to wait until the end of the appointment. As they were leaving, I spoke to the bride and her mom in Spanish, saying, I hope you have a great day. Feel free to come back anytime. We have many more gowns you can try. Oh boy, the reaction was priceless. You know that feeling when you've been in a lot of pain, and finally the doctor gives you something that works, and the pain just vanishes? or when you've been craving a particular ice cream flavor and you finally find it. That's exactly how good it felt to see the expression on that bride's mom's face when she realized I had understood her entire hour of criticism. A few years back, during a 13-hour Greyhound trip, I found myself in the middle of a mental breakdown. The people around me were playing loud music, and it was pretty awful stuff. The rap songs they played had lots of bad words, making it unbearable. Trying to keep my cool, I asked them politely if they could use headphones. They refused, claiming their kids needed to be entertained. So, I suggested giving the kids headphones instead. But instead of understanding, they started swearing at me, and things got heated. To make matters worse, another passenger joined in by playing loud music just to annoy me. I attempted to get the bus driver to enforce the rule about using headphones while listening to music on the bus, but he threatened to kick me out instead. I reached my breaking point and decided to share my misery with everyone. I said, All right then, since we're not going to follow the rules about being quiet and using headphones, I'll just sing. Now, let me mention that I may not have the greatest voice, but I've had vocal training since I was a kid, so I can avoid sounding like a dying cat, if I want to. But this time, I didn't want to. So I started singing the song that never ends, as loudly and off-key as I could. After just one round of the song, the annoying passenger put on their headphones. After a few more repeats, the entire bus joined in, yelling at the others to either use headphones or turn off their music, just to make me stop. From that point on, we enjoyed the rest of the trip in blissful silence. Around 20 years ago, I signed up for a Gmail account when it was brand new. Luckily, I got a straightforward email address, like redacted at Gmail. But over the past few years, I've been receiving all sorts of emails from someone else with my first initial and last name. Some of them seem important, like hotel reservations and train tickets. I tried reaching out to her using the phone number I found in the emails, asking her to stop using my email, but she just brushes it off every time being rude about it. Lately, it seems she's been shopping at Kohl's as I keep getting her rewards emails. Since she refuses to stop using my email, I decided to use her $50 Kohl's cash she sent a couple of weeks ago, and I used another $20 today. In my view, she knows she's using my email, so she's practically giving me her Kohl's cash. Thanks for the new belt and jeans. I'll gladly take them. Working from home, I received a notification on my phone saying my Amazon package was delivered. A valuable item worth a couple hundred dollars. Hurrying outside, I found no sign of the package, even though the delivery van was still nearby. I approached the Amazon driver, informing him about the missing package. He seemed surprised and asked for my address, claiming he had already delivered it to me, but I knew he hadn't. I decided to call Amazon to resolve the issue and walked away from the driver. As I made the call, he called out saying he found my package, but there was an issue and he couldn't deliver it due to a possible duplication. Another driver would bring the correct one later. I questioned him about why he marked it as delivered, and he said it was because he didn't realize there was an error. Refusing to accept his explanation, I called Amazon to report the situation. They confirmed nothing was wrong with my package, and that the driver should have given it to me even if it was a duplicate. 
A mere two minutes after hanging up with Amazon, my doorbell rang. I quickly opened the door, and to my surprise, it was the same driver, sprinting back to his van and speeding away through the neighborhood. My package was left at my doorstep. I called Amazon again to inform them that the same driver had returned, and I suspected something fishy was going on. They assured me they would investigate the matter and thanked me for reporting the incident. I felt a bit apprehensive about making the call, but I truly believed the driver was running a package stealing scheme. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you.